Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over UFC Fight Night from a betting perspective. And we're going to, as usual, take a contrarian approach to our wagers. Um, it's a very, very low-level card from a talent perspective, and with only 10 fights on the card, uh, they really have done quite a bit of analysis with this uh, with these fights. Um, and these are the types of cards that I'd like to play. Uh, and I, these are the cards I'd like to analyze from the purposes of being contrarian, because I think that there's a, quite a bit of consensus on most of these fights. So we are going to try to fade all of that and play, you know, reasonable, reasonable plays that are just being ignored. The The concept being that if something is that obvious, then it's probably, I don't want to say not going to happen, but it is probably somewhat overvalued. So uh, that is the approach that I take to all forms of wagering where there's any kind of vig or any kind of market like this, whether it be the stock market, whether it be other types of sports bets, um, and, and specifically with respect to the M to UFC, there's quite a bit of chaos in, in these fights and more chaos than I think people realize. So people get, get very tied down to certain takes and to very, I don't know, binary outcomes like, Either if A is going to win, it's going to be this way. But if B is going to win, it's going to be that way. And I know as as human beings, we like to, you know, to I don't know, figure things out and complete puzzles. But it's not exactly that easy. And when it comes to UFC wagering, uh, whether it be the the straight bets or the prop market, that which is most obvious and that which is the easy story to tell is usually the side that you're supposed to fade. So we're going to identify what that is and and make sure that we go against it and have some fun with this. Now, let's go over the rules. Um, we are going to be betting one fight, excuse me, one uh, one bet on every fight on the card, and that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Uh, second of all, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight on the card, and we don't, you know, that's the not the best man money management system in the world, and we don't care either. Um, and for us, one unit is... Continuing to be $180, um, 10 times high. Good luck, hopefully. Hopefully better luck than last week where we literally lost every single fight. And when you be, when you are contrarian, that is going to happen from time to time. So what we always try to do is set ourselves up for success after failure. And what we are going to accomplish is even if we go 0 and 9, we still have a chance because we are going to bet something in the last fight that is going to hopefully get all of our money back. So we always have something kind of fun going into the main event. And uh, yeah, listen, yes, this, this will give you some some possible bets to make during this uh, card. But more to the point, it'll hopefully teach you how to be contrarian, how to think about wagering in maybe a different way. So let's just get started. Uh, first fight of the night, Stephanie Luciano versus Talita Allen Carr. And this fight was, was uh, this is a rematch of a fight that took place about a year and a half or two years ago. And uh, everybody did have the opportunity to, to watch this fight. It's very available. And uh, what you see, okay, is Talita Allen Carr grappling for two rounds and completely running out of gas. And then Stephanie Luciano just kind of taking over and winning a clear 10-8 um, final round to get a draw and almost finish her. So what happens is it's kind of this time continuum uh, theory that people believe that, you know, if they start the fight over again, it's kind of going to be an extension of how that last fight ended. So people just think that Luciano is just going to continue to take over and win this fight. And if not, then it's going to be the same type of thing. You know, Alan Carr is going to, you know, probably do okay and then gas and Luciano is going to just kind of take over. So uh, there's a whole lot of, 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 love on the Luciano side of this. So we're just going to go ahead and do something with Alan Carr. So we could just take Alan Carr plus the 130, or we could just hope that that the fight goes the way that it was about to go, uh, that being Alan Carr getting the submission. Um, so let's see what Alan Carr by sub is. Uh, Alan Carr by sub is going to be um, winning method. Alan Carr by sub plus 650. I mean, that's good enough for me. So Alan Carr plus 650 for 180. Okay, uh, moving on. Yusuf Zalal versus Jarno Ahrens. But you know what? This this really just hit me um, about, a, you know, just a couple of hours ago. And that 
Jury, Jarno Evans is definitely the side here. And the reason why, I mean, first of all, there's literally not a single person that I have seen, and we've had a full week to digest this, that is picking Aaron's. And I don't mean picking him to win. I mean picking him even plus the 340. I'm not even hearing anybody saying that Zalal, uh, Zalal is, is the line is too wide or anything like that. And I don't know. I, I, I think the reason why Zalal is all of a sudden this big kind of world champion is because of one fight and his last fight against, against Billy Q. And if we, if we throw that fight out, he he had a okay. What is this? He had a he had a fight in the in the combat league. That that doesn't count. He'd be fighting two fights at low level in the Sparta combat league. And before, last time he was in the UFC, he had a draw against Damon Blackshear. I guess that's okay. Lost to Sean Woodson. Lost to Sing Wu Choi. He got cut. Okay, he lost to. to hey, went the distance with Ilya Tapuria. That's actually really good. Um. A decision with Peter Barrett. I mean, he was just kind of okay. You know, it wasn't like great or anything. And then he got caught and he came back. And because of this last fight against Billy Q, where listen, granted, he looked really good, but you know, Billy Q, he's not exactly the greatest defensive uh MMA guy. I mean, he he does not mind getting hit or or or, or wrestled with or whatever. He just tries to out cardio you and 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 Zalal had the answers. And all of a sudden, I mean, you have you have him being hailed as like the new champion or something like that. And he, you know, he's going up against Jarno Aaron's, who listen, he's had his he's had his troubles. I mean, he he fought, he lost to uh, to William Gomez in a, a majority decision. Um, what was it like a, a tie? How how was it a majority decision? I forgot how that worked. But and Gomez isn't isn't terrible. He lost to Singu Choi, which obviously wasn't great. But then he did have a fight. He, he beats uh, Stephen to win his last fight. I mean, it's not, it's not the worst. So I don't know. I just, I just really think that that, I just really think that he's the side here at these odds. So we're going to just go play Jarno Aaron's and be literally the only one to play him, plus the three forty for one eighty. All right, uh, Johnson Denise versus Carl Williams. All right, this is pretty clear. Uh, it is a striker versus grappler matchup and everybody knows this um and denise is certainly going to be better on the feet but carl williams is certainly going to be better on the ground and as a result you know denise could win if he gets like a ko and that is considered his method of victory so it's going to uh i was going to say so that is something you can't bet because it's just the obvious way that he's going to win. And Carl Williams, he doesn't really have any finishing upside. So if he wins, he's going to get a whole bunch of takedowns and, and win by decision. So you can't bet that either. What you can bet, if you want, is is Carl Williams inside the distance or uh, or maybe Jonathan Denise by decision. And those are very, very contrarian plays. And they're certainly not the most likely outcomes, but uh, they're so un not so unlikely that, but they're just so contrarian that they're probably good wagers in this particular spot. Um, so let's take a look at this first. Let's see if Carl Williams actually has ever finished anybody. It doesn't look that way. He, okay. He has a KO a couple of KOs like a long time ago. So I guess it's possible he can get a KO. And and Johnson Nu I mean, he's nothing but first round KO KO. Look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This board here. Just almost all first round KOs except for here, where he lost in the second round um, by a KO. So uh, here the problem is. The problem is is that is that. Denise got taken down by Austin Lane, who's just not even almost one tenth of the wrestler that Carl Williams is. So I think that we have to do something like Carl Williams inside the distance. So let's see what that line is. And then let's take a look at some other kind of funky ideas. So Carl Williams inside is what is this? Is plus 200. 
And I, I guess that's okay. But let's look at some specifics. Williams by by KO two fifty. Carl Williams by sub is plus nine hundred. Is he just literally unable to get a submission? Is that is that possible? I don't know. Maybe we are going to go with Carl Williams inside the distance. So Carl Williams inside plus two hundred. Is that what it was? Let's see. By KO or submission plus two hundred for one eighty. Uh, Carol Hosa versus Patty Kianzad. Um, low level women's fight. I mean, if anything, you're just supposed to take Patty Kianzad as the dog. Um, so we're not doing that. <laughs> uh, if anything, we are going to try something with Carol Hosa. And the, the issue is, is that how is how do people think she's going to win? Okay, I, the problem is I've heard a little too much about her good volume and the fact that she can get takedowns. So I think that the one thing that people forgot is that she could win by decision. So I've heard them people talk about like a volume based KO or maybe a a a sub. So we're actually just going to take Hosa by decision here. Um, not the most contrarian play we can make, but I think it's the best of all the given alternatives here. So. Let's see. Hosa by decision. Plus, it's minus 150. Boy, oh boy. Look at these odds. What we're really not, we're really doing this. She's plus eleven hundred by sub and eight hundred by KO. Is this is this real? I I I don't know what this is all about. Matter of fact, I'm like, I'm curious as why I, I gotta go look at my DFS lineups again because I, I'm playing probably way too much of her in DFS. Boy, this is crazy, but I don't know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this, you know. Screw this. I'm I'm gonna play her inside the distance. What what is her 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 line here? This is nuts. Should I play just by sub? Well, let's do this. Let's let's look at her at her track record here. I mean, I'd like to see something where it says she can finish a fight. Split decision, decision, decision. I guess she's never really had a, a, a finish inside the distance here. I don't know what to do now. Now I'm just now I'm just confused. We're just going to do it. So, Hosa inside the distance. Let's take a look at this. Uh, winning method. This is kind of nuts. Plus 500. Let's go. All right. Um, We have Kazama versus Gregorio. Kazama is just kind of very low level. He's got a terrible chin. He's a big disappointment in the road to UFC. Gregorio basically probably hasn't beat everywhere. I mean, like, listen, Kazam is obviously a better wrestler, but he's just not been able to do much of anything. So he probably has no chance to win. So we're going to play it. Uh, Kazama plus the 210 for 180. Uh, all right. This one is is kind of a lock. Yana Santos versus Chelsea Chandler. The entire civilized world is on Chelsea Chandler. And I don't know why. I guess because she's, you know, put on a little more exciting fights than, than Santos has. Uh, maybe it's because Santos had her name changed. I don't know, but Santos at minus minus one fifty five. I don't think anybody's actually taking this. So we're going to do it. Um, if we really wanted to be contrary, you know what we would do? We would play her inside the distance. Cause no one literally, no one's doing that. So let's actually do that. Santos inside. Santos inside the distance. Plus 600 for 180. Let's go. That's kind of a nuts bet, which means it's probably going to win. All right. Chris Gutierrez versus Kwang Lee. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. I'm just going to do it. Chris Gutierrez. He's first, first of all, he's going to be 80% owned in DFS. Um, he, You have Kwang Lee, who basically is no one's ever heard of. He's coming in on short notice to fight. Chris Gutierrez, who was who was really training for a tough fight against Jared Basharat. This is, to me, 
just like a classic letdown spot. I mean, there's no way that Chris Gutierrez is preparing at all for Kwang Lee. So we're just going to take the Kwang Lee plus the 410. As a matter of fact, we might play him in by KO if 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 we can show that he's has some kind of KO in his arsenal. So let's just see. Kwang Lee, let's see what, what he does here. I mean, KO, TKO, sub, decision, sub, sub. I mean, I th I think he could get a finish here. How about that? So let's let's be let's be crazy. Uh let's play Quang Lee inside the distance, which means plus eight hundred for one eighty and and just lose. But I mean, this is just your classic situation. You know what I mean? Like there's no way Gutierrez knows anything about this dude. And the guy has nothing to lose. He's going to come out strong. And uh, we'll see. All right. Um, Danny Barlow versus Nikolai Varinitikov. All right. So Barlow has the hand of God. So what that means, he's definitely going to KO him. So what can you not bet? You're, you're following here, right? So so you can't bet Danny Barlow by KO. All you can do is play either Verza, whatever his name is, or maybe, just maybe something stupid like Danny Barlow by decision. So let's see what some of these are. Danny Barlow by decision is plus one, only plus 180. That's pretty obscene. How bad is this guy? Is Vertic? Is anybody really playing him? I don't know. We're, we're going to try it. Hand of God. I mean, you know what we really should do? I mean, this is such is this such a such a such a nickname. With such the nickname, the Hand of God, with all the with all the knockout power. I wonder if he could get a submission here, or is that really just asking for trouble? All right, this is what we're going to do. If in fact this dude has has a submission on his record at all, we're gonna try it. Otherwise, there's no way he isn't. He does, he's got a submission. He does have a first round submission. Hmm. Yeah, but he's got he's got the nickname. There's no way he's going to try it. Left hand to God. There's no way he will even go for this. So we'll just go ahead and play uh, Varetnikov here, plus 300. Uh, Damon Jackson versus Jose Marisal. This is going to be a banger. Uh, so whenever something is going to be a banger, we already know what to do. We're going to bet the fight to go the distance. Uh, fight prop, fight to go the distance. Yes, plus my, just minus the 110. Nice and easy. And that's nine. Um, and we're going to continue to probably go O for this card, right? Uh, so let's see. Alan Carr by sub. How is she going to do that if she's going to gas out? Well, we'll find out. Jarno Aarons against against the new, the second coming of, of, of the new the new championship. Yusuf Zalal, the, the guy who was cut. Now all of a sudden he's going to be like just minus 350 or whatever. Carl Williams inside. He never finishes anybody. What are we doing here? Carol Hosa by sub. I, I, this is just a price play. I have inside the distance. I don't know what this is all about. So we'll try it. Kazama, terrible chin. Uh, just, just not UFC material. Only plus two ten. We'll try it. Santos. There's no way she's finishing anybody. So plus six hundred. Quang Lee. I, I like this one a lot actually. Um, Quang Lee inside the distance. Scudiers. There's no way he's prepared. There's just no way. Um. And we'll just see what happens. Beresnikov, uh, whatever, how do you pronounce his name against the, the guy with the great nickname? Great nickname, big knockout power. Good luck. And uh, Damon Jackson versus Mariscal. The bangers always bet to fin bet to go the distance. So we're going to go 0-9. So how are we going to get our money back here at this main event? So in the main event, we have this, we have a rematch. We have Martin Tybura against Sergey Spivak. Um, in the last fight, uh, Tybura won. He got some takedowns, but what people are saying that it's a, you know, it's a, this was a long time ago. 
um, and Spivak is looking for revenge and all that stuff. Um, so I think there's a little more of a lean towards Spivak on this uh, in this uh, in this fight. So what we're probably going to have to do is something like Tybora inside. I mean, that's like the only way that we're going to get our 10 to 1. Unless you play something with like Spivak. And, and and the way you would have to play Spivak is either, well, what's contrarian? Like, well, first of all, I don't think people think the fight's going to go the distance. And if they do, it's probably going to be a Tybora type of type of fight so maybe spivak if spivak by decision is better than minus 900 or plus 900 we'll try that um otherwise it's probably gonna have to do something with tybura inside so let's just see what some of these odds are i'm kind of hoping that you can get a real good price on spivak by decision nah no, no such luck uh plus 350 um tybura by sub plus a thousand Okay, that's that's something I think I can live with here. I mean, I would just like to make sure that he's actually subbed somebody. I, he has to. He's had a million fights. He's got to. He's got to have... You know, I'm not even going to look at this. We're going to do this. Tybura by sub, plus a 10,000, whatever this is, plus 10 to 1, hopefully to get our money back. And we'll put this in as soon as we we log off. Uh, that'll do it. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, have fun watching this card and uh, we'll see you next week.